for Carbu, the Council for Arab British Understanding, we, like everybody else, were amazed by what has happened in, in the Arab world, throughout the Arab world, in the last five months. And for us, what we see is a game changer. This is the Arab awakening, and they're not about to go back to sleep. So what does it mean for British policy, indeed for broader Western policy? And it seems very clear to us, very, very clear, that Britain has to change its historic stance towards the region where it's backed up dinosaur regimes, it's propped them up, kept them in power, even put them in power on certain occasions, but hasn't really developed a meaningful relationship with the peoples. And this is what matters. We have to change the way we operate, see the region in a different way, respect the peoples. Now, when we saw our Prime Minister, David Cameron, going out to Egypt, my first reaction was fantastic. He was going there just after Mubarak had been uh, kicked out by the people. He was the first senior European Western leader to do so. And he goes to Tahrir Square and he meets these fantastic uh, young men and women who have been protesting, he pays great tribute to them, and I thought, wonderful. And then the next thing you hear, that he was accompanied by a whole coterie of arms dealers, the people, the companies, who'd been selling the very, very things that these brave young uh, protesters had been confronting all across Egypt, and not just in Egypt. And what message, what message does this send out to peoples across the region? Simply, that Britain hadn't changed, that we were still going to be selling these weapons to regimes that use them for oppressive purposes. Take Libya, for example. What does it say about British policy that in November, Britain had the largest stall at the Libyan arms fair? We were attempting to sell lots of weapons to them. Gaddafi was still in power. This was a man who had even attacked Britain, according to uh, the results of the Lockerbie case, who had supplied the IRA with uh, arms and Semtex that were used in attacks on Britain. And yet we were dealing with them in this sort of fashion. And it's one thing to welcome him back into the international fold because he gave up certain elements of his uh, weaponry. This totally different thing to actually get into uh, really selling him arms. And then a few months later, we're engaged in armed conflict with uh, his regime. So are we going to see this monumental change in British policy? I think this is very, very unclear and a bit like the, uh, the American uh, approach. We are seeing uh, a case-by-case -case, uh, approach to each and every country, and it's not really clear where Cameron and Hay stand on these issues. I think it's also important to uh, note that on the day that Palestinians are marking their Nakba, 63 years uh, since uh, they, they lost their country, that three quarters of them became refugees, that our policy, our position towards uh, Israel-Palestine is also in tatters. We backed a failed uh, negotiating process that went on forever, achieved nothing, in fact, probably made the situation worse. And Palestinians were highly resentful that we didn't respect the results of their elections. So you had this split that was exacerbated by both Israel and Western powers between Hamas and Fatah. What are we going to do there? What are we going to do to try to resolve that historic conflict? It seems really across the board that uh, Britain and the United States are losing, that they are not really setting the agenda, but they are following events, they are reactive, and they're reacting very poorly.